1971, the Lightning Bolt Surf Shop opened up in Honolulu. That location previously had been the Hobie Surf Shop. And the Hobie Surf Shop was kind of that old school thing uh, that kind of didn't make it through the shortboard revolution as, as well as others did. And uh, Jerry Lopez and Jack Shipley at Lightning Bolt Surfboards had a little different take on this whole thing. They understood what was happening out on the North Shore. And a lot of younger surfers and new surfboard makers were building boards and their boards weren't available to customers in Honolulu. So when they opened up the store, they sort of went around and gathered up all the best surfer, shaper characters um, that were building boards in little garages and backyards on the North Shore. And like an art gallery, they had those boards um, put a lightning bolt on them, or those board makers put a lightning bolt on them and, and bring them into the store. And because they were all made by the very best guys surfing on the North Shore, the boards were good. And the quality of the craftsmanship was really high. And so that brand just took off. And I know this seems like a little out of place, but it's hard to say, you know, how big of an impact that singular thing had on the North Shore because suddenly guys who were surfboard makers on the North Shore had a way to sell surfboards in the summer when they normally weren't able to sell those boards in the summer because there was no customers out here when there was no surf. So that allowed guys to live year round on the North Shore. And at the same time, they built the hotel, which was called the Kui Lima, out on the uh, Kuhuku Point um, at that same time. So a whole bunch of other jobs opened up for waiters and cooks and dishwashers and maids and you know maintenance and stuff. So a lot of guys got jobs out there and suddenly the North Shore had a new set of residents that were able to live year round and become a community whereas before the people were coming in for the winter hanging out for a few months and leaving and uh, <clears throat> all of those guys were mostly surfing based and their girlfriends wives and uh, so the town of Haleiwa started changing um, because there was a lot more customers because there was a lot more residents. <clears throat> and at the same time, the surfing, because it has this sort of charismatic and uh, interesting side to it, the world started waking up to surfing being cool and Hawaii surfing being cool. And um, a lot of tourists started to come to the North Shore but it was still a little tiny amount. And so there was surf shops that opened on the North Shore, but they'd never last. They'd come and go. This wasn't enough clientele and customers to make it worth opening up business and having a life. And uh, <clears throat> starting in the late 70s, that began to change where after all the surf contests being promoted on TV, and the uh, um, worldwide awareness of surfing and coming to the North Shore, which seemed to the rest of the world like a very cool place, very unusual and unique, and uh, very country and laid back, different than Honolulu. The 80s started this influx of people visiting the North Shore and staying around long enough uh, for the day or for a couple days and that changed economically most everything that was happening on the North Shore and so businesses of all different sorts popped up and more surf shops popped up and uh, once you get kind of that momentum it just grows and gets better and better and better. Well, I guess that's debatable whether it's better because it gets a little more crowded and, and uh, in some ways out of control, but it, it uh, economically improved substantially where people could live here and have a pretty decent life. So <clears throat> I, like many people, were making surfboards in my backyard all through the 70s. And then um, 
it was kind of a surprise to me, but my reputation kind of took off and now I had like a lot of boards to build and a lot of requests. And I just had a crummy little 400 square foot shop in my backyard. So I started looking around for some commercial property um, here on the North Shore where I could build a higher volume of boards and be able to do it legally. And uh, found there wasn't any kind of industrial property on the North Shore that was available. The sugar mill was still operating and they were busy over there. And uh, there was a small little piece out in Laie by Cackle Fresh, but uh, that was not really available to get. It was a uh, part of the city and county or state, I can't remember. And so I discovered um, that an old friend of mine had this property uh, that he had an option on to develop for Bishop Estate, and that was Howard Green, who is my landlord here now. So. We started having some meetings and we put together this plan to do this development, which later became the North Shore Marketplace. And, uh, you know, Howard was really receptive to this whole thing um, and it was great. It wasn't an easy project, took way longer than I thought. And uh, finally in about 1987, I think we actually got open after, this was, this property here was an old junkyard and so it took a bunch of cleaning up all the old cars and developing the, the property and stuff. And uh, so around that time was the time when Hollyiva was really starting to wake up at the end of the 80s and really become uh, a much more popular tourist uh, location, kind of a little theme park kind of a mentality. And so uh, the North Shore Marketplace grew really fast, filled up with uh, tenants and more buildings were built and, and uh, <clears throat> the commercial retail value of the property in downtown Haleiwa just blew up and uh, a lot of people moved here, a lot of people that couldn't keep up or older families that owned the property sold them to other people who had more interest in developing it. and kind of brought us to where we're at today, where Olive is a full-blown little uh, tourist town and um, stills maintained a pretty decent amount of its old charm and uh, kind of funky little crusty country flavor. So, you know, people like it. A few things that need to get done still, you know, getting some sidewalks and other things, but uh, generally it's, it's doing pretty good. And, uh, you know, all these years of doing business in this town, which has been, I don't know, 33 or five or somewhere around in that zone. Um, you know, we went through the, the uh, road going out at Waimea and 9-11, uh, the building of the bypass road. Um, a couple of big economic crashes, the last one kind of being the Bush slash Obama one. And then we came crashing headlong into uh, this COVID one. And uh, it seems like we're rebounding out of that rapidly. And.